Hi everyone, welcome to True Crime and Tarot. I am Natalie and this is my channel. So what I do, do is I find missing persons cases and I like to do um, in-depth research about them and then do a tarot reading at the end to see what really happened and what the outcome of the case is to be. So I am doing a new case today. Suzanne was born on April the 6th, 1978. Her birth was in Saratoga in New York. Her hair was light brown with highlights. Her eyes are blue and her height is 5 foot 3. Her weight is 175 pounds. She is uh, a female and her race is white. Okay, so Suzanne Lyle has a light brown birthmark on her left calf a mole on her left cheek beneath her earlobe and a surgical scar on her left foot. Lyle was known to be an avid computer user and enjoyed spending time conversing online. Suzanne Lyle was last seen on the evening of March the 2nd, 1998 at approximately 9.20pm. As she departed her place of employment at the Crossgates Mall in Gilderland in New York, Lyle was last seen wearing a long black trench coat, a black shirt and blue jeans. She was carrying a black book bag or a tote bag as some people know it as. Um, Lyle was known to have boarded a Capital District Transit Authority bus heading to Collins Circle at the State University of New York, which is S-U-N-Y. Um, at Albany, New York, where she was a student. It is believed that she exited the bus at Collins Circle at approximately 9.45pm and has not been say seen since. Um, Lyle's parents have become activists on behalf of the families um, of other missing persons. Founding an organisation called the Centre for Hope to support those families, they were present when President George W. Bush signed Suzanne's law and enacted as part of the Protect Act of 2003, which raised the age of which local police must inform um, National Crime Information Centre of a missing person from 18 to 21. Five years later, he also signed into the law of Susan Lyle Campus Safety Act, part of the Higher Education Opportunity Act. Based on similar legislation, the state passed the year after Suzanne disappeared, which requires college police departments to have plans for investigating missing person cases and serious crimes on the campus. A Suzanne's law passed by the New York State um, Senate several times but not yet voted on the State Assembly would also increase the penalties for violent crimes on and near educational facilities should it become law. Suzanne's parents called Suzanne's bank who contacted them later that day to inform them that their daughter's debit card has been used to withdraw $20 from an ATM at the Stewart Shop convenience store in Albany at approximately 4pm. Two days later, a delay. Um, Doug Lyle later criticised criticize the campus police agreed after um, Suzanne missed another midterm as well as her other scheduled classes that her disappearance was not a typical case of a missing undergraduate and called in the state police for assistance. Um, the Lyles and SUNY Albany put up $15,000 reward for information that would resolve the case. Um, flyers with Suzanne's picture were posted all over campus and nearby. The ATM withdrawal of Suzanne's bank drew particular attention. The stewards where it was located and had a security camera, but it was focused on the area around the cashier and did not show the ATM. 
so it could not be determined who was using it at the time. However, a man who might likely have been using it around the time identified publicly by the Nike baseball cap he was wearing, which was sought as a possible witness or person of interest. Whoever had used the card known that the, it was the correct pin, and the Condon said that only he and Suzanne knew it, and she only also always withdrew exactly $20 any time she went to the ATM according to her parents. Her parents said that the Stewarts at the intersection of Central Avenue and Manning Boulevard, two miles, which is 3.2 kilometres southeast of the camp campus, was not in a part of the city where she would ever have gone. The clerk on duty at the time did not recognise her. Police eventually located the man with the nightcap and came to believe he had nothing to do with the case, although they could not completely exclude him. So this is where I had um, gone and done some questions through the tarot cards to see um, the ins and outs of what happened, who was involved, um, where she is now and what the final outcome of the case is to be. So this is um, the first question that I asked, which was what happened to Suzanne G. Lyell. The first card that came out then was the Eight of Swords. So there was a crisis and a lot of confusion and unfocusedness. Suzanne was backed into a corner with a lot of fear and terror and was hopeless. She became a victim of punishment and was blindfolded and tied up. Empress, Suzanne was very caring, a kind of person who may have had children or worked with children or did art, theatre or there is a person of interest in this case that has um, that type of um, energy and working around children or as children. Okay, reverse page of swords then. So there was an enemy that caught her off guard that was cold-hearted and very aggressive and malicious. They had spied on her and they was very paranoid, may have had some type of autism, learning difficulty or had some type of mental health issues. Um, there was a injury that was caused by a sharp object. Nine of Cups. They accomplished exactly what they wanted. They were very satisfied and smug and there is a possibility of doing sexual acts to Suzanne. Reverse Lovers. This is an unrequainted love of Suzanne's that had got dumped and could not get over it. They was very immature and jealous and possessive and a bully. Reverse Eight of Pentacles. This perpetrator was a failure in life that either didn't have a job or wasn't good at it. Very careless and had a lot of debts. Reverse Queen of Pentacles. So there's a woman that may have done prostitution or was involved in some abuse that was jealous and was in some type of poverty. Then we had um, reverse two of cups that come out. So there was domination and submission and a love that had gone wrong. Five of cups, there was a loss and a feeling of despair and sadness. Someone was very unstable that had a lot of guilt, regret and shame that is a male he kept wallowing in self-pity and was saying his goodbyes to Suzanne. Seven pentacles. The male had cleared up Suzanne's body around the area that may be near a farmland. Reverse king of wands. A male that may have had red to blonde hair may be responsible for Suzanne's disappearance. He's very immature, rude, bully, so forceful, controlling, hot-tempered and jealous. The next question I asked then was who was involved in Suzanne's disappearance and we had the page of pentacles. So a male that is very cautious, may have been a student or did training at the time or done an apprenticeship that seems to be very friendly and stable. Reverse nine of pentacles, um, may have been involved in some type of prostitution yet again. Um, or swindling and covering up the death of Suzanne. 
um, reverse five of swords. So there's a lot of guilty conscience that he has been involved in criminal behaviour before. He has regrets what he has done and he did a major sacrifice and have buried Suzanne. Then we had the temperance card. So there's a lot of water where Suzanne's body is buried and he's going to be letting the past stay in the past and he's trying to move on. Um, reverse four of cups so there was drugs involved with this man and being very spaced out but was aware of what he was actually doing then it was the reverse magician so he was a very violent person very arrogant very delusional and, and manipulated as well then the next question was where is Suzanne or her body okay so we have reverse six of souls so she is near water or a creek or a riverbed. Reverse Knight of Pentacles. So there is there's also something about the ex-partner that is a gym fanatic or body obsessed or had changed his career that is coming through with this card. Um, Ace of Wands. So there's some news coming in, some type of stirring that is coming out in the case and action is going to be taken. Reverse justice. So there's someone that is not taking uh, responsibility and is to be caught out and feel like they are being treated unfairly. Page of Wands. So there's a young person who is very intelligent and successful that is to receive some exciting news. World card. So there's someone who graduated and had a wonderful future ahead of them that have been around family and friends. Reverse King of Pentacles, there's a male that may be a businessman or a risk taker that gambles, that is a lot, um, does a lot of bribing, that is involved in some abuse and that is very much corrupted. And then the last question I asked then was what is the final outcome of Suzanne's case going to be? Reverse three of wands, so there is to be a lot of delays and setbacks and the feeling of no one wants to help out in the case. Then the Queen of Cups, there is to be a very mature, nurturing female that is to be very supportive and kind during this case and will be showing her cares and condolences. She is also, also spiritual and intuitive and like a clairvoyant that is willing to help during this case so that is what research i have done and that is the um outcome of the reading of the tower reading that have come through and those predicted um for this case i really hope they do find suzanne and i'm going to give a lot of love my case condolences to suzanne and her family i hope she gets found very very soon and um